All right, you guys. This is about the amount of stock I keep in. Uh, this summer has been the summer of the bad spark plugs. So I had some really good used BPR 5 ESs and of different types too, eh? Like there's Champion, uh, what is that? RN9YC, but they all work in the Hondas. <coughs> Excuse me. So I bought four more BPR 5 ESs. Uh, I was getting down, this is a poor selection of RJ19 LMs or BR2 LMs, so I bought four new BR2 LMs and then two RC12YCs which go into the which go into the Briggs. So that's about how many spark plugs I keep. This is for lawnmowers. And then up above uh, where I think in that box up there, I keep my spark plugs. It's a, uh, like this is just a hobby situation, so you don't want to have $50,000 worth of inventory sitting around, you know? A couple of hundred dollars worth of inventory is fine. Let me just take you over to the wall and I'll show you what I got over there. Okay, so you just saw my spark plugs. We're not quite done with those. So down on the bottom row here now, this is... Just come back here. This is in the corner of the garage. There's the benches there, right? Furnace, that just turned off. So I got a few seconds to get this done. So down on the bottom row and other places are Honda gaskets and Kohler gaskets and miscellaneous. The next row up is pretty much all Briggs, primer bulbs, uh, gaskets for the Briggs Classic, um, O-rings for the bowls, diaphragms for the five horse, horizontal diaphragms for the classic, flywheel keys, points, and gas clamps for all the engines over there, right there. The next row is Tecumseh, right? Again, springs, oh there's, there's a big springs down here, Right there, and then there's Tecumseh springs there, primer bulbs, carb kits, intake gaskets, and then uh, more than Briggs, Tecumseh has O-rings of different sizes, right, up in here. And uh, then we have some two-stroke carbs miscellaneous stuff over on the two right-hand hooks over there. Up there is gas filters of various sizes, Briggs, the clear ones. Uh, and then the rest of this is mostly shear pins, right? Right there, shear pins. I'm starting to run out of rope for pull, pull ropes. And then that is all st uh, strings for weed whackers. And then over here I have a miscellaneous assortment of belts. Some of them are good quality, some are bad, but I have something just about of every size that I need, and then if I need one, I can go buy one, but this will get me through. Remember, this is the kind of stuff that gets you through on a Saturday night at seven o'clock. So anyway, there's my wall of tools. I'm getting a little extension cord heavy. Uh, tools, metric, standard. This is all just quick grab stuff. I've got other stuff over in the boxes, right? You know, there's the good quality stuff's over there. This is all my handy dandy stuff. So now I'm just going to turn you off and then we're going to show off, uh, not show off, but we're going to show you some, some of the other stuff that I've got that you might find interesting. I'll just put you right here and we'll do that. So at the beginning of the video you saw spark plugs. Those are the ones that I've actually bought and paid for. And these ones are, are recycled spark plugs. And I've got them sort of, kind of. And these have all been tested. This is more of the Honda line. There's a few torches in there that you might see, right? BPR 4HS, that came out of my buddy's uh, old generator. Um, these come out of the, uh, the small throated uh, chainsaw, 79Y or equivalent, right? And then this is just like the little CJ8s and stuff are, that are around, right? CJ7Y. More of the older saw stuff. 
So yes, I can get myself out of a jam. I bought these by mistake. Uh, they said RC1, RC12, Y, LYC, and that's a longer, a longer uh, insulator. And the, if you put these in the wrong engine, these will hit the piston. So I haven't really found a use for those yet. So now, in the rest of this box, that I keep the spark plugs in. Let's just put it down there. Our chainsaw rewinds and a weed whacker ends like for the like this one here, right? And also a few clutches for chainsaws, right? That is a McCullough 10 inch clutch. But I tell you. You know, once in a while, something like that can save your neck. And that's about as big, pardon me, that's about as big as the stuff that I keep inside the shop. One more minute. So the next thing that'll trip you up in a repair is air filters. And I've got a really good selection. Yes, some of them are iffy, but they might get you out of trouble with a $40 lawnmower, right? So here's the general Tecumseh 195 type air filter. These are the Briggs. Only got two left of that, so that's kind of, but we're at the end of the year right now. I've got other, these are the new Briggs uh, 550E type air filters. So they're becoming more popular and these are becoming less popular. And then of course these fit, these fit the Hondas as well. But the Hondas do make their own these are used, but they're in pretty good shape. Hondas do make their own filter, but they, they are the same size as the Briggs. I call them just the Briggs blue ones, but there's a number, of course. Okay, so that that's partly, but let's just get that in there. Come on, guys, be my buddy. Be my little filter buddy. And then I've also got this one. Pardon me. Don't get sick. I'll put you down. I can't do this with four arms. There, are you back? All right. So now we've got a plastic bag full of uh, foam filters. And some of these are homemade, like that'll fit a Tecumseh, right? Some of them will fit a, that's for a steel uh, weed whacker. And then most of these will fit the uh, Riggs Classics here. That's another Tecumseh. Back over in here. Um, I think I got an old oil filter for a tractor here for a Kohler. And air filters for chainsaws. Some are new, some not, right? Big, big Briggs air filter there. And just a few miscellaneous Briggs parts in here as well. I'm encouraging you guys, you know, if, if you find, like I live way, I live in a, we live in a populated area, but we're a long ways from everything. Like when I order something on Amazon, it takes a week. It doesn't get there the next morning. So forgive me for doing this. There we are. So yes, so here's a box of what I call Honda uh, miscellaneous coils that come from up there. You see there's a box missing now, and there's two other boxes, Briggs coils and Tecumseh coils. And some of these coils are actually back in the day when we had points, right? So that's something you just can't order up anymore. So let's just have a look at Honda coils, for example. I think this is it. So, it's Saturday night, 7 o'clock, you've got things running, you know what's wrong, and you can't do anything. This is the type of thing that'll save your hide, right? There, Honda. Does that not look like a Honda coil? And they should all look the same with that little indent there with a, almost looks like this piece has been crimped on. And you can, you can, uh, and then I sometimes just sort them 
Like this, this is an original Honda, right? What does this say? Honda OEM right there. Right, with the shorter, uh, really well-built boot, but not a very long cable. Versus something like this that probably came off of a generator. But you could use that and even cut this off or just loop it around itself or whatever. So let's just line these up. Just hang on there. Don't get excited. Okay, let's just have a look at this, right? So depending on the length of the wire too, you can uh, use something like that for a, a generator or a different engine, a horizontal engine maybe. Uh, but these ones, where's that best one there? GCV 160 coil, Honda, right there. And they've all been tested. Not just tested with an ohmmeter, but they've been tested for spark. So wouldn't you guys that, you know, yeah, I don't keep parts. Wouldn't you love to have a few of these laying around? A few different kinds too, right? Because some of these old Honda, Honda coils, where are they? There's one here that's really square. Right here. Quite square. There's a big square one in here. Right here. Wouldn't you give your front tooth for that if you needed it? It's quite fat, eh? So, la la la. We'll go to the next subject in a minute here. Okay, look up. So there were the Hondas, and I've got about 10 of each type. Like there's the classic Quantum, the Briggs with points, and then same with the Tecumseh, old and new, you'll see up there. I got about 10 of each maybe. So now I'm going to bring down the last box from up there. This is hard work. <laughs> Stop cables. The, the subject of the boxes sometimes changes, but right now this is stop cable. And there's all different kinds of stuff in here. There's 1 16th wire rope. There's the cables themselves, right? And then I've got a, a I keep a separate bag of stuff that are made for special, like a, a dual choke stop cable, miscellaneous stuff. Sorry, I'm kind of shaking around. And if you don't go away, I'll just, along with that. Along with that, hey, we'll catch up here. Along with that is a couple of boxes of these crimps for 1 16th steel cable. And I tell you, you can use a hammer on them, you can use a crimper, you can do anything you like. So yes, this box gets brought down every time I get an old mower, right? You can imagine. Here, it kind of, just kind of gives you an idea. There's more and more of this stuff in here, but there you go. Now, it takes a certain amount of work to do this as well. Space is not that important, you know. You can put these, you get plastic bins and put them under a tarp. I'm just going to put this back up there. Oh, this bag is the, is the most beat up bag of all, right? How many times are you working on cables? No, so we're not doing tools on this tour. We are going to do a couple more fun things. Just be right back. Okay, so these are stored under my bench. Now I know, you, and I get teased for this, but what would you guys do with a clean, you can tell it's a Honda because it's got a 3 16 or so inlet, not a quarter inch. Those are the Kohlers. And uh, what would you guys, and that's a Honda 160 horizontal, uh, vertical shaft carburetor ready to go. Now how many of you guys would love to have that, like I said, on Saturday night at 7 o'clock? 
So when you get an old Honda that's coming in and it's not worth saving, but it does run, and you know the carburetor it doesn't even have to be clean. Here is a Honda. Here's a Honda. What do I call it? Clone carburetor. And the difference in weight, I bet you this carburetor weighs three times what this carburetor does. But still, fine stuff. Here's another Honda. There's another Honda. Right? Versus the non Honda. Well, I guess that one has a metal flap too, but it's half the weight. And then back in this corner back here are, are some Hondas, like, but this is from a champion. Champion generator, a little guy, 80 cc. So naturally, the the uh, opening for the hole is a lot smaller than a 160. Right? Look at the difference. But this is this is off a generator. So I keep. It's still a Honda style, though, right? And these ones with the shut off. That's a Honda. What does this say? Oh, it leaks. So it's got one of those horrible brass jets with the uh, with the brass seat. So if I if I have anything I know about them, I label them. Either I write on them like Champion 80cc, or I put a tag on them. What else we got here? Oh, this is just Honda parts, not just right bowls. Emulsion tubes, and then Honda levers and springs. So I have that with each manufacturer. Actually. So this one's for Hank. Be right there, Hank. Now you've got yours disassembled, Hank, eh? or I don't. I've even got them connected still to the intake manifold. <coughs> Excuse me. But that's a Tecumseh carburetor from an older style uh, Tecumseh with a throttle on the side. Right? This is a five horse horizontal because there's no 90 degree elbow on the fuel intake. After you get to know a machine, like there, there's a Han, there's a Tecumseh with a 90 degree throttle intake, you know that's come off of a vertical Tecumseh. What's this one say? Not tested. So I try to put a little information on them if I can. Uh, good. I think that one says good. And then a bag of Tecumseh bowls and seals, levers, intakes. And I've got a bag of Briggs, and then I've also got, or a flat, and then I've also got this, which is kind of interesting. This is, this is a mishmash, right? Everything from Kohler, uh, Kohler 12, uh, 10 horse to 16 horsepower, I think. Kenny will correct me. All the way through to, uh, this looks like a Honda carburetor, but it's actually off of a Kohler lawnmower because of the quarter inch inlet. Hondas have a 3 inch inlet and the Kohlers have a quarter inch inlet. And now some of the power mowers have the quarter inch inlet as well. And I've got a special carburetor in here. Uh, Kohler Command 12.5 carb and I drilled out the seat but I didn't order the seat, the seat for it. That can save your neck someday. And what's this one? Oh, ha, this is what I got from Mick. A plastic Briggs carburetor sitting in here. So it's just miscellaneous stuff in this last box. And there's a box of Briggs down there too. You can probably see see that box of Briggs right down there. So there's there. Are there one, two, three, four boxes? La la la. So. That's pretty much my spare parts that I keep in the shop. So when it's really cold outside, I don't have to go to the shed. And right now the, the shed's full of patio furniture. It's got a snow blower in there that I'm gonna sell. And then, but up on my right hand side, I guess I could take you out there and show you quick. But I'm not gonna take any of the boxes out. 
There's uh, two Honda boxes, three Tecumseh boxes, and two Briggs boxes. Like these boxes, these they're bankers boxes that hold paper. And in those are rewinds, mufflers, the bigger stuff that you're looking at and you're going to go, I'm going to need that someday, but I don't want it to take up too much room. Uh, and then I don't keep that long. I might keep a season's worth of decks. Now there's a few decks out there that are pretty nice. They're out, outside. So let's just go have a look at the shed just for a quick reference and then we'll be done. Thanks. All right, back behind those three lawnmowers, there's boxes from Costco and they've got big parts like wheels and blades and blade adapters and uh, my that's just junk aluminum in that blue bin there that kind of stuff so here we are at the shed I'm just gonna open this up you can't see the combination okay hang on don't go anywhere yeah so here's my shed that snowblower is getting sold. So once you get that out of here, it's actually not that bad, right? But up here, we have... Uh, that, uh, that's a Briggs Shroud. We got two Hondas. We got one Honda box, actually. Two Briggs and Stratton and three Tecumseh. And then along the back there, I've got my spare engines back over there. And two-stroke stuff below that with that chainsaw case and stuff. So those boxes are full of semi-big parts, but not real big parts. Rewinds, shrouds, mufflers, stuff you don't have to keep inside. And then like I said over here, and with the water in the lids. <laughs> Looks ugly right now, but uh, that is my spare big stuff. Like I said, blades, wheels, uh, height adjusters and stuff like that. Thanks. So yes, I guess you could call me a parts hoarder, but they're pretty organized, you know, like if I need a Honda coil, I know where it is. If I need a Briggs muffler, yeah, I gotta dig through the shed, that kind of thing. But, uh, and I do order, you know, if I need something quick, Amazon, but the quality on Amazon's really gone downhill lately. And then I've got 90 miles north of me is a, is a city where I just go and order from one of these small engine suppliers there. And that takes about three days. So anyway, thank you for watching this silly little video. It's kind of a pre-winter video, right? Now for you guys, this looks like winter, but for us this isn't winter. A couple inches of snow around the edges of the yard is not winter. So thank you very much for joining me on this little journey. and. Uh, We'll see you on the next one. Bye. All right, here's a good little lesson on battery charging. Right now, I've got the battery charger connected to this front battery. They're little tractor, yard tractor batteries. And at the same time, I've got two leads connecting to the back battery. So really, this little charger is charging both batteries at the same time. I've got two blacks going to the back and two reds going to the back. So you'll notice one thing now. I'm going to use my digital meter. Don't worry about this voltage anymore. We're going to take the digital meter. This is a good one. It's getting old, but it's a good meter. And it, right now, on the front battery, I'm charging... Hang on. I'm charging at 14.83. And the back battery is charging at 14.59. And you would think that would be impossible, right? Because they're connected together. But look at this. I'm going to go on the red lead only, on this red lead. Well, let's just go down to one red lead for now. It'll make it simpler to explain. So on this red lead, we're going to just see if there's a voltage drop right across the lead itself. And with the one strap on there, we have 1.16 volts going across this little lead between battery A and battery B. I'll do that again. We're going to connect and just have a look at the voltage between, look at that, 0 0.14, 15, 13, right? So that is, that's called a voltage drop across that wire. And because there's not that much current, it's not hot. 
But that is why I put two of them across there. We'll do it again. Where's the other end? There, we're safe. Just to reduce the current across the cables by half. So even right on the battery post itself, uh, right across the battery post itself from the post to the red connector, we have five one thousandths of a volt. I hope you can see that. So right, right on the battery strap, we have five one thousandths of a volt difference between the post and the clip. I can probably even do that on the on the uh, battery charger itself. So there we got zero volts there, right? And look at that, a point zero one four fourteen thousandths of a volt difference just between the clip and the post. So isn't that interesting? I'm going to zoom you in a little bit maybe. So right there, the meter is there, and uh, we'll short the leads together. Zero volts, and just from the post to the battery charging lead, we have Oops, I get out of the way. We have 13 thousandths of a volt drop. And you'd think it would be zero, wouldn't you? And then to the boat, the battery at the back from post to post, we have point, we have a half a volt difference between the back battery and the front battery. So this battery then will measure, we'll say 14.8, 14.85, and the back battery. Is 14.15 so we're, we're actually losing almost 0.6 of a volt with the two pieces of wire going the, from the front battery to the back battery there you go sorry you can't see that so we're so that so in my day we used to put everything on load in the big batteries in the uh, in the, the telephone offices and we would actually measure a quarter of a volt on a two inch battery strap connecting one battery to another and you'd think it would be zero, wouldn't you? But with a good meter, right here, can you see the meter? Ah, oh, Bruce. Okay, you can see the meter. And right to the from the battery post to the connector of the of the charger, we are seeing. Ah, it's hard to do. Everything's hard to do, right? So point zero, so thirty thousandths of a volt drop when it's actually connected. Now, if I go from post to post, it should read zero. Well, yeah, there it is. And then from post to the other battery post, positive to positive. Now, I'm gonna poke that in there good. We read 0.4 of a volt's difference, even though it's connected with two alligator clips. So this is where you have to be careful, because you're unfused here, and you've got two batteries being charged with these little tiny thin wires, right? So I'm going to back it off to uh, 2 amps, and that'll just make it a tiny bit safer. There, 14.2 volts, and our current will be probably, yeah, 2 amps. 1.9, 1, 1 our current is 1.9 amps now. That's pretty darn cool, huh? Thanks for watching this.